Welcome to the Creative Pen Podcast. I'm Joanna Penn, thriller author and creative entrepreneur, bringing you interviews, inspiration, and information on writing, publishing options, and marketing ideas for your book. You can find the episode show notes, your free author blueprint, and lots more information at thecreativepen.com. And that's pen with a double N. And here's the show. Hello creatives, I'm Joanna Penn and this is episode number 740 of the podcast and it is Friday the 1st of March 2024 as I record this and yes it is March. (laughs) Crazy how fast the time goes. In today's show, I have an interview with Alex Smith from Book Vault about the various options for authors to print beautiful books, sell direct and make more money with print. Now, I've been using Book Vault for a couple of years now. They fulfill orders for my Shopify stores, creativepenbooks.com and jfpenbooks.com. They also fulfill my Kickstarters. And we have done silken finish hardbacks with full colour photos for pilgrimage and then gold foil with ribbon hardbacks for writing the shadow. I also love their bundling, which is now self-service, as well as their print quality and their helpful customer service and their prices. Seriously, if you sell a lot of print books through KDP Print and Ingram, take a look at how much more profit you can make when selling direct. Also, there's an exciting new release coming from Book Vault soon, which we will be talking about uh, in the interview section. I am planning on doing some cool things for the launch of Spear of Destiny. And once again, I will be working with Alex and Curtis and the team at Book Vault. They also now have a printer in the USA, so it is ever expanding. So that discussion with Alex is coming up in the interview section. In publishing industry and AI-related topics. So the development of generative AI continues apace, and the publishing industry is beginning to embrace it. There's an interview from Frankfurt Book Fair this week, which is the biggest publishing rights fair in the world. And it's with Carlo Carreño, publishing consultant and audio ambassador of the Frankfurt Book Rights Fair. He says... And it starts with Spotify. Spotify's offering of audiobooks in a subscription model with content from the big five and US publishers such as Podium is likely to mark a turnaround in the industry with more competition and more purchasing options available. Another trend is the rise of AI narrative. At this point, I can say that it has not yet reached the necessary quality for audiobooks, but the progress in the last few months is amazing. I also believe that we in publishing should avoid extreme positions when it comes to AI. I don't think we have to choose between a complete replacement of the human narrative or a complete rejection of AI. And I'm so glad to hear some common sense on this. I totally agree. We don't have to choose. And I wish some authors would understand this, but they're not listening to this show. (laughs) So back in my 2020 book on artificial intelligence, blockchain and virtual worlds, I wrote about this and talked about the stratification of rights. I said in the book, AI voices will narrate mass market audio content with human narrators producing artisan audio experiences. So I propose you might have your high quality human narration and then different levels of AI audio with different voices at different price points, as well as multicast audio, which might combine human main characters, for example, with AI secondary characters or other uh, AI extras like sound effects. Now, at the moment, the problem is that many contracts include audiobook rights or some kind of one size fits all clause and that needs to change. The rights model has to change in line with the tech and the opportunities. Now as an audio consumer and I consume a lot of audio, I often don't care about the voice. I just want the content. And at other times I am interested in the narrator themselves, particularly memoir or business books, self help books written by um, read by the author. And while I don't listen to fiction much in audio, I do sometimes listen to multicast productions. For example World War Z, as we say, or World War Z to Americans, is a good example, which is an incredible audiobook filled with a lot of different voices, which fits the book. Forget the movie, the book is amazing. I should also add, I wrote in that AI book, authors and publishers will sell directly from their own platforms to super fans who want to support creators. 
And if we make the most of technological change, we can create different audio products for different markets and expand a thriving economic model for authors, rights holders, narrators and the audiobook industry. It's so funny reading this, rereading this book. It's, it's pretty short and yet I think I'm pretty spot on. <laughs> And of course, lots of authors are now selling audiobooks directly. And yes, you can get my audiobooks from my Shopify stores, creativepenbooks.com with the ones narrated by me, and also jfpenbooks.com, which is 95% of those are human narrated by several different narrators. And in fact, I have just engaged my human narrator, Veronica Giguere, for the 2022 editions of the first three arcane novels. She did them originally back in like 2016 or something, and then uh, I really wrote them in 2022 and I pulled the audio and we're going to redo them. Veronica will also do Spear of Destiny for the Kickstarter and now of course my audiobooks are available on all the usual platforms in all the usual ways but you can get bundles on my store. So yes as ever I am AI positive in the main but as Carlo notes back on that Frankfurt Book Fair uh, article I don't think it's good enough for fiction yet either. And there's still a lot of work in editing to be done, even with AI. And also, I am a human narrator. I narrate my own nonfiction. Everyone's situation is different. Now, if you are interested in AI audio, I have a demo of 11 labs for audiobooks with Leanna Morgan inside my community on Patreon. If you're interested in that, patreon.com forward slash the creative pen. So in other things, there's been a lot of press hammering Google about their woke AI, Gemini, which has generated pictures of diverse Nazis. Yes, black Nazis in SS uniforms, which, as we know, is not historically accurate, amongst other things like diverse Vikings and stuff like that. (laughs) But this week... I had a demo of Gemini 1.5 Pro with James at Pseudowrite. So we geek out about these things and we had a play with it. It is pretty awesome. Now, the biggest thing with this model is it has an input window of around 700,000 words. Of course, it's in tokens, but it kind of combines to around 700,000 words of input. That's like the prompt. (laughs) So we used my entire Arcane series, that is uh, 12 books, full length and novellas and a short story. Now, I've been wanting to make a story Bible for years, but it's just a lot of work to go through all the books and note down all the different things for all the different characters and everything that happens and all of that. So we used Gemini 1.5 to explore the text. One of the most useful things was an extended character bio for my main character, Morgan Sierra, which included the various injuries that she suffers in various books, which I'd lost track of and completely forgotten. (laughs) It was also, and this is the best thing, I've been wanting this for ages, which is a character list of every single character in every single book and story with a few lines about who they are in alphabetical order across the whole series. Now, I have hundreds of secondary characters, so it was so good to get it. And also, because I have different cultures and different countries in every every book, then I sort of combine them in different ways. And what I want to make sure is that I don't reuse a same name. And so having a list is brilliant, and it would have taken just way too long to do that. We also then used it to come up with some ideas for stories that would call back to earlier books in the series to kind of, you know, for people who've been reading a long time or for people who start the series now they'll be like oh yeah there's that character wow that's interesting that kind of thing now we were both far more impressed than we expected to be to be honest and in fact what was interesting was it got far more right than we thought it would it didn't really confabulate until much later in the prompting process um so yeah we were impressed and the reason why i wanted to talk about this it's not available so you can't try it out. As I record this, it's not available. Um, I can't use it either, but I'm definitely going to sign up when it is available because I really want to do these sort of bigger uh, sort of cross series queries. Now, uh, some of you might use the chat GPT, custom GPT option. It re- That works in a completely different way and doesn't work as well as this. Now, I also wanted to mention it because it underscores something very important. If you were only reading the news on this, you would think that Gemini 1.5 Pro is just a waste of time. And 
very importantly, you need to do your own research into this stuff. Don't believe random people on social media, generally random angry people (laughs) on social media. And don't just take the news at the headline. Um, Be curious, investigate further, listen to different sources. If you can, try things yourself. And this is so important in the age of generative AI. It's look, you need to look into things more carefully. Now, if you're interested in in this, um, the Gemini models and some of the interesting things going on, have a listen to Demis Hassabis, CEO of Google DeepMind, on the Hard Fork podcast, which is one of the podcasts I listen to every week, Hard Fork. Um, They get into some of the bigger stuff around what generative AI can offer. Now, I feel like authors get overly obsessed around how this impacts writing books, which of course is our industry, so we should be interested. But Demis talks about AlphaFold and the impact of the new drug discovery company Isomorphic Labs, which should have new drugs coming in the next couple of years to solve some of our biggest medical issues. And AI solving hard problems is the point of this. People are not building AGI or trying to build AGI in order to do us out of a job. (laughs) People are trying to solve climate change, save the planet, cure disease, save lives. And to be honest, if that means part of my job is taken away, then that is fine with me. But of course, you know how I have changed my business model. Go back to the 15 year pivot that I did just before Christmas. So December 2023, the 15 year pivot. I have changed my business model based on all of this. I now focus on selling direct and connecting with fewer people instead of trying to compete in on the big stores and what's coming in terms of generate to market. So most of my income now is from Kickstarter, Shopify and Patreon. So thank you. And uh, thank you if you do buy direct or support the show. But also thank you. You can still get my books from all the usual stores in all the usual formats and also from libraries and physical bookstores. Links in the show notes to all of this. Now on authors and AI, I wanted to share a heartfelt article by Talina Winters called Finding My Voice in the AI Wars which puts into words a lot of the things I've been talking about in different episodes over years now. Now, just for context, Talina writes epic mermaid fantasy, which looks very cool, sweet small town romance, contemporary fantasy and standalone romance, and also has editing services and does other things for authors. Now, please read the article in full. I can only quote parts of it. It is very very good. And Talina, I thank you for writing this and putting this out there. So just a few quotes from it. She says, the onset of the generative AI age has instigated an existential crisis, unlike any artists have known before. It's no wonder that the mere mention of the two little words AI, two little letters AI, in many online forums is like inviting the mob to stone you. Scared people who feel backed into a corner aren't known for their magnanimous, generous behaviour. I'm not immune to the existential angst caused by AI. I tried ChatGPT within the first week of its public release, and one of the first things I did was to see how well it would perform when writing book descriptions, one of my sources of freelance income. I was quickly assured that it wouldn't take my job soon, but I could also see it might only be a matter of time. And you know what? I'm not getting much of that work anymore. Large language models are still not amazing at writing book descriptions, but they've improved a lot since November 2022. And of course, after uh, GPT-4 came out um, last year, which you can get in the pro model, and it is actually very good at sales descriptions, as is Claude.ai, which is what I use. Back to Talina, she says they're now so much better than the average author who typically hates writing book descriptions and they're so much freer than paying a pro. I totally understand why authors are now outsourcing this work to a machine. Do I feel threatened by this, even though writing and editing are my two primary sources of income? I was at the beginning. I had a lot of worries about how this would affect my career as an author and freelance writer, or how I would get my work noticed in a market that would soon be drowning in quickly produced books, as if it wasn't bad enough already. Now I'm over the fear and I'm just focusing on the work of making sure my business can survive this new artistic revolution 
and not only survive, but hopefully thrive. She goes on. Artists and authors won't win the AI wars by raging against the machines, which is a futile effort. Instead, I believe it is those who adopt AI into their toolkit who will be best poised to leap into this new age of AI that has been thrust upon us. And to do that, we need to get past all the fear and infighting. Everyone needs to stop trying to tell other artists which ways are okay to create. That's the point of art, that we can express ourselves in any medium we choose. And just on this, this is also part of being an indie author. It drives me nuts around the whole independent author model. It's like, we're independent. We do this ourselves. So you can't say to me, oh, you can't do that. It's like, really? (laughs) Who gives you the right to tell me what to do? Um, You know, no one needs to give you permission to write and publish and market and do your thing. That is part of why we are indie authors, is to choose our own path in the world. Going back to Talina, she says, AI is not actually intelligent, not yet. It's a tool. Without humans, AI is nothing. With a human directing it, it can be made to create incredibly moving pieces of art. Absolutely, I totally agree with that. Lashing out at other artists isn't going to make you safer. Throwing stones at someone else's career will not help yours rise. Please, I beg you, instead of letting fear turn you into one of the mob, seek to understand what you fear. Oh, and I'm so with Talina now. And uh, there's some real toxic stuff going around on social media. I had already pretty much left social media, but I'm even more away from it now and moving much, much more of this into my Patreon because of exactly this. Um, I've, I have these waves, I've talked about it before, these kind of waves of negativity that come at me sometimes and most of the time I'm okay with it but some days I'm like why do I even bother and then I remember why I bother it's for you (laughs) you listeners you're still listening you're not the ones who are doing this but I guess it's good to talk about it because I know people are afraid of it themselves and I really think Talina it's a very very good article I really want you to go and read it uh links in the show notes and then I love how the Uh, how Talina ends this, which is she notes the joy and fun to be had with AI. She says, as a recovering workaholic who can turn anything into a job, totally know how that feels, playing with AI, specifically AI art, has brought a level of play and joy back into my life that I haven't felt as a creative in many years. Silliness is something I lost touch with many years ago, but now there are times I make silly things just for fun, and often new ideas are sparked in the process. Generative AI has also enabled my husband, who doesn't share my natural artistic ability, to express himself with art in ways I've never thought I would see. So unleash magic, my friend, with whatever tools you have available, because the world needs the magic in you. So yes, thank you, Talina, for this great article. And I hope it encourages others to try playing and having fun with AI tools. And if you want a laugh and you're in the, if you're in my Patreon, I did a video about how I made a book trailer and it is full of giggling um, as I play with AI art. It is, it it makes me giggle so much. and, And that is a joy. In personal news, right, the author blueprint paperback edition in normal size and large print is now available on creativepenbooks.com. You can get the free ebook if you're on my list or sign up at thecreativepen.com forward slash blueprint. But many people have asked for the print edition as it has lots of practical stuff about self-publishing and book marketing. This is the completely rewritten blueprint that I did uh, last month, I guess January, beginning of February. And it includes new chapters on AI and updated info on self-publishing and book marketing. So yes, uh, go to creativepenbooks.com if you want that. And it is not on any of the main retail stores. So if you find it there, it's a pirated version. (laughs) So that is Author Blueprint by Joanna Penn. And it's so funny because, of course, before Christmas, I said, oh, I'm not doing any more books as Joanna Penn. And thus, I immediately rewrote this and essentially wrote another book as Joanna Penn. So that's Author Blueprint. (laughs) 
<laughs> also, exciting news! I have just signed the contract for a Spanish language deal for the first three arcane thrillers, more than a decade after they first came out, thanks to the Drop Cap Rights Agency, who are managing my licensing. And just to encourage you, these books came out in 2011, 2012, and 2013, so more than a decade ago. And those three books hit the USA Today list five years after publication in my single author box set. And Spear of Destiny is the 13th book that will come out this year in that long running series. And it'd be good to have Morgan and Jake back out there having adventures. And yes, I wanted to encourage you. People think, oh, well, you know, I need to get some rights deal in the first year after publication. That's just not necessary, especially with fiction, which is evergreen. Now, on that, I am behind on my draft for Spear of Destiny, as I had hoped to finish the first draft before going away this week. I'm only about halfway through the first draft because a few things popped up in my research. And I, for example, a book just arrived from Germany that I'm excited about, signed by a primary source from World War Two, co-written by two authors on either side of the war, sorry, two soldiers on either side of the war. So um, I have to read this and use it somehow in the book. And I'm, I've done so much research for this book. My authors, because I'm going to do this extended author's note as part of the Kickstarter in the special edition and uh, that goes into my research and my research process in a lot more detail. Also, I haven't written a full length novel since before the pandemic. I can't remember if I've mentioned this already, but I'm kind of relearning how to do a whole novel. Now, I've written a lot of books since the beginning of the pandemic. I've written two novellas, several short stories, my pilgrimage memoir and writing The Shadow. But a full length novel is a challenge for anyone. And this one is going to take a bit longer. For the first time ever, I have had to ask for an extension with my editor, Kristen. I might still make the original date, but I'd rather have a little more time because I am loving the research, perhaps a little too much. If you love research, you will know the addiction that comes from finding a new source and you're like, oh, this is amazing. Oh, I'm loving it. Lots of synchronicity sparks where coincidences happen, like things actually happen in history that echo forwards in time in my arcane books. And yeah, anyway, too much fun. If you're interested, the Kickstarter pre-launch page with the cover is at jfpen.com forward slash destiny. The next two weeks are also a little crazy. This week, as uh, this goes out, I am off to Sevilla, Seville, in the south of Spain. I will be speaking at 20 Books Seville on the AI-assisted artisan author. And I'm definitely getting a bit more punchy with my content. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, The weather will be lovely and warm, so it'll be great to get some sun because it is chilly here in the UK. And looking forward to hanging out with authors, talking about books and things. And that show is very relaxed like the networking breaks are really really long and uh, there's wine and it's just nice really. Then I'm back for just a day before heading back off to London Book Fair. I'm chairing a panel on authors and technology with Orna Ross and Michael Leron, who I'm sure many of you know, and meeting up with various people, also attending many of the sessions on AI. London Book Fair is for publishers. It's a publishing industry event and they have a lot of sessions on AI. Um, So it'd be interesting to hear what people are saying. If you are going to London Book Fair, I'll be around at the Author HQ area on and off. And remember to say hi to Alex and the Book Vault team if you're going and Alex is on the show today. Also check out the Alliance of Independent Authors stand, which will be nearby. If you see me, I am a real person. (laughs) Please say hi. And yes, we can do selfies, but no hugs, no handshakes. Uh, This is how I I think I avoided getting sick in Vegas. uh, So I'm planning to do that again. I'm not masking up or anything, but I I try and avoid touch. (laughs) Now, London Book Fair is notorious for everyone getting sick the week after, and I really don't want to be. So, um, which is just like any big convention, it's not specifically than the book fair. If you are going, wear comfortable shoes, bring an external battery to charge your phone and bring in a sandwich because the uh, shops are super expensive inside. And of course, I will be sharing any thoughts and what happened from those two events over the coming weeks. So thanks for all your emails and comments and photos this week. Jacopo or Jacopo says, I wanted to reach out and express my gratitude for the enlightening episode on writing memoir. 
It was a treasure trove of wisdom and practical advice for anyone interested in writing memoir or exploring the art of storytelling. Thank you for that. Brooke said, I'm listening to the podcast from my back balcony here in Syracuse, Sicily. It looks down into a latomia, a stone quarry used in Greek and Roman times. Fantastic. And a great picture of the quarry and the trees below. And Tamela says, uh, sent a great photo by the ocean, looks beautiful. I've been listening since 2014 and never miss an episode. Oh, thank you. I'm writing from Barbados. I usually listen from my home in North Carolina. Thanks for being a bright light in the world. Oh, thank you so much. So please leave a comment on the podcast show notes at thecreativepen.com or on the YouTube channel or email me. Send me pictures of where you're listening. Joanna at thecreativepen.com. I love to hear from you. It makes this more of a conversation. But please don't message me on social media as I am almost off it, which is a relief. So today's show is sponsored by Pro Writing Aid, because however you choose to publish, whether you go direct to readers or you go wide as an indie or you want a traditional deal, you need to make your book the best it can be. Pro Writing Aid is one of my absolute must use tools in my writing process. I use it for every book, every short story, fiction and nonfiction, everything. Now, you can use it in different ways. Personally, I open Pro Writing Aid on my laptop. Then I open my Scrivener project within it and work through each chapter of a first draft, which is more manageable than doing a whole document. It suggests improvements. And of course, I don't accept all the changes, but I accept a lot of them. It helps me find a lot of problems and it integrates with Word and other writing software as well. Pro Writing Aid knows all the rules of editing and helps you apply them. And of course, you can choose not to make the changes as you like. It helps with make- making your writing more active, finding repeated words, finding words you could improve, sentence structure, grammar, punctuation issues, typos, spacing problems and more. So why you software to help you? Why don't you just learn all the grammar and writing rules and apply them yourself? You lazy author. <laughs> Well, we all use tools to improve our process and we are also often blind to our own writing issues. It helps to have another pair of eyes, even if the eyes are software. Now, won't a human editor do all this? Well, yes, they can. But I'd rather pay my editor, Kristen, to fix the things the software can't and she encourages the use. As brilliant as Pro Writing Aid is, it cannot read the manuscript as a whole or comment on bigger issues like character development or inconsistencies or plot holes. So I use Pro Writing Aid as my essential editing tool before sending to my human editor. You can check out the free edition or get 25% off the premium edition by using my link prowritingaid.com forward slash Joanna. That's prowritingaid.com forward slash Joanna, J-O-A-N-N-A. So this type of corporate sponsorship pays for the hosting, transcription and editing. But my time in creating the show is sponsored by my community at patreon.com forward slash the creative pen with a double N. Thanks to the seven new patrons who've joined this week. And thanks to everyone who's been supporting for months and years. Last week, I shared a behind the scenes demo of how to use Eleven Labs for AI narrated audiobooks with author Leanna Morgan, who is fantastic. If you join the community, you get that and all the backlist videos and extra audio, as well as access to the monthly Q&A where I answer your questions in essentially a solo show extra a month. The Patreon is a monthly subscription, the equivalent of buying me a black coffee a month or a couple of coffees if you're feeling generous. So if you get value from the show and you want more, come on over and join more than a thousand authors. Join us at patreon.com forward slash the creative pen. You can also access content through the new Patreon app, which has easy access to view and listen. Right, let's get on with the interview. Alex Smith is the technical lead of bookvault.app, the independent printer that I use for the books I sell direct on Shopify, as well as for my Kickstarters. So welcome to the show, Alex. Thank you so much for having us on. Oh, no, I'm excited to talk to you. So first up, just tell people a bit more about Book Vault and also how its parent company has been around much longer than people might think, given you kind of came out of nowhere a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. so Book Vault's part of a larger company called Print On Demand Worldwide. 
So we've been going for just shy of 29 years now. So um, l- longer than me. So <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Wait, how yeah. old are you? I, I'm 24, nearly 25. So <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> That's a great line. Okay, just so people know, you don't own the company, right? You're you're the technical know. lead and you help all of us authors with all our stuff. But yeah, sorry, carry on about Print On Demand Worldwide. Yeah, so we have our own production facility in the UK based in Peterborough, so kind of 70 miles north of London. And from there, we've kind of done short run printing for, as I say, that, that length of period. It was about in 2009 we launched Book Vault, and that was to serve our traditional publishers that we'd been working with, mainly in the academic sector. So they had a need to print single books on demand and kind of a simple ordering process. So Book Vault was always kind of rink fenced off to them, and it was an invite only kind of system. When COVID struck, pretty much as everyone did, we sat back and, and evaluated our business and it gave us a real good time to kind of see where we're going. So we took those two years to completely redevelop the system, moving it more to kind of a self up, self sign up approach and kind of target the indie author market as well. So we relaunched it in around late 2021. And that's kind of when we popped up on the scene. I think we then met you at London Book Fair in 22. And that's kind of where we've been going since. Yes, and as we speak, you're at another conference and you're at a lot of the conferences. So hopefully some of the people listening might have met you or Curtis or one of the team. But just in case people don't know, what does Book Vault offer authors right now? And what are the main services that authors are using? So our big focus is to deliver high quality books to help authors earn more. So we've got a wide variety of print options. So we currently offer six stocks. So that ranges everything from the kind of similar stuff that you get from KDP and Ingram with those traditional trade papers. But equally, we offer some more kind of different papers. So a really nice coated paper for children's books and things like that. So that's something we really focus on. Equally, we've got six different bindings as well. So whereas you'd get your traditional paperback or printed case bound, we also offer linen wrap with foiling and a jacket. We offer spiral and wire bound. So they're kind of lay flat books as well as saddle stitch as well. So that's where you've got a staple in the middle and that kind of pamphlet thing. So in terms of sizings as well, we don't have specific sizings. So you can upload a book of any size from um, A6 all the way to 297 by 297 millimetres. So a really big range, and that's in all those different bindings as well. And equally, a big thing for us as well is we offer split colour. So if you've got a 100-page book and only one colour page, we'll only charge you for that one colour page, which is, is a really big thing for us. One, one thing to note as well, I, I guess, with Book Vault is we do have an upload fee, but that does stop the mass uploads. So when we initially relaunched it, it was a bit of naivety from us. We had someone in a weekend upload 20,000 books, all with different pictures <laughs> of kittens on. So that completely ground the system to a halt and realised we had to do something. I mean, I like kittens, but not that many kittens. So we had to put that upload fee in place. But we do work with organisations such as the Alliance of Independent Authors, and they get every Alliance of Independent Authors member gets unlimited free title uploads each month. So it's not there as a barrier. It's just there to make sure that we've got genuine people wanting to make genuine money through selling their books. Mm, And we know how important that is. And I actually think some of these other places are going to put in some kind of nominal fee because (laughs) it is kind of getting a bit crazy. But let's come back to a few of the books. So amusingly, because of the sizing, this is what's so funny. And you remember it, right? We met at London Book Fair and I said, can I upload my five by eight files, the ones that I'd already got for KDP? And Lulu, who the kind of other main one that people were using for things like Kickstarter and all of that, they didn't offer a five by eight. And so that was the moment I was like, great, I can just upload the same file. So I wanted to point that out to people is the files that you might have done for KDP, you can upload to Book Vault, right? I mean, can you tell the, the, the uploads pretty easy, but just tell people what are some common issues that you see in the files that people send that might just give a few tips there? Yeah, certainly. I think using a template or getting your sizing right is the most important one. We do have quite a lot of people. Funnily enough, there's a, we, we have a few set sizes that people generally use there as well as a custom one. And there's a size called standard and quite a lot of people seem to tick that one no matter what size their file is and think that they're going to produce a standard book with whatever you upload. So it's, it's really important to make sure your sizing is I- exactly correct. We do have online validation. So as soon as you upload a file, it'll automatically go through and tick it. And then it'll be straight away ready to 
order. So it, it's kind of worth doing that. And then once you have uploaded, make sure to download the files and do a virtual proof and check that they look okay as well. And I think you'll probably agree the most important thing we see what people don't do is order a proof when you've uploaded it as well. Mm. So you can just order a single copy to yourself because we've had people upload a, a title and then do a Kickstarter run of 500 books. And as soon as it comes off the end of the line, it gets brought up because it doesn't look right. And it's always a yeah, pretty nerve wracking experience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just crazy. But a couple of things there. One is, and amusingly, I said five by eight there, which is in inches, if people yes. don't know. And when I think you've now added a toggle, haven't you? Yes. So that it's yeah. centimetres and inches. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, millimetres and inches, because yeah, we had had people trying to upload a book that was five millimetres by eight millimetres. So uh, they ran into a few issues there. And that's, I that's guess, so the, funny. <laughs> yeah, being a UK company, try, even myself, trying to get my head around inches and millimetres, it's always one of those, I need a little pocket calculator. Um, so. Yeah. <laughs> to quickly do it but yeah we we upload kind of you can tr- toggle between it and yeah it that's there and also so people know because i did this the other day you can upload an interior file and then download a template for the cover can't you yes yeah so that's something we've worked on we're, we're looking to enhance it even further but yeah you can even before you've made a title you can go on to our quoting tool put your sizes in and, and specifications and then it'll be you can download both an interior template and a cover template as well as if you want to upload a jacket as well you can download a jacket template mm. so then the other thing is i think many of us want to do more and more higher quality print books but you mentioned six stocks and special paper you mentioned six bindings and lots of different types of things and I know in terms of the covers you can have different colored covers and materials and like I did a ribbon and there's all this different foil and it's almost like there are so many options now so what's what is the process for an author who might be thinking about this like how do they know what to even think about asking for or trying out so something we really pride ourselves on is customer service. So that's something we've noticed as we've grown with expanding with customer service because we really want to make sure that we can offer a really high level of service to everyone. So we hired, I think we've got two new people starting this week. So we're growing quite quite big there. So one thing I would always suggest is on our contact page, you can book a call with someone. So you can book a call with one of our print experts to, to kind of talk through your options and they can show you on a video of what you might be looking at as well. So that's free of charge. And as I say, quite a lot of our customer service people come from the print floor. So they will have a very detailed knowledge of, of how it all works. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I take lots of pictures of books, like at London Book Fair, where I'll see you in a couple of weeks time. And it's like, okay, I really like that. I don't know what it's called. But if I show that picture to you, you'll know what it's called. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's, uh, we have been stumped a couple of times because the obscurity, especially some books coming out of China, there's, we've, we've never seen it. But yeah, generally, we, there's at least someone in the office that knows what it is. So uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So a couple of things that people might have heard of uh, that may be coming. I mean, like you, so you did ribbons for me. Can anyone order ribbons now? Um, That's ready to go. So it'll be launching very imminently, probably in the next couple of weeks. It's something that we want to make sure, again, that we've got the level of customer service that that we need for when they launch, because we feel there's going to be a few questions. So we've got quite a big, quite an event block at the moment. But as soon as that's kind of finished, the end of March time, they'll be coming out live on the portal for anyone to order. Ah, okay. And then what about foil? Because Sasha Black right now uh, is doing an amazing, like, I'm a bit jealous because I had really beautiful gold foil. (laughs) But now I'm like rainbow foil. I didn't even know rainbow foil was a thing. So tell us more about foil. Yeah. So as I say, we kind of taking it back as a company, our owner, Andy Cork, he's always been a yes man. So whenever the publishers come up to him asking for something, he would always say yes. It'll be one of the things where when he walks in the office, we're always worried about what he's agreed to next. So as a company, we kind of like to be able to do things that maybe other POD printers can't do. So we're introducing foiling. So that'll be the case that you supply an additional file with a black outline of what you want foiling. And effectively, once we've printed the cover, the jacket, we can then put it through the foiling machine and it will print the foil on top as well. So we've got gold, silver, the holographic rainbow silver, as well as a, a green, I believe. And we'll kind of be expanding that along with these new changes with ribbons, as well as head and tail bands and end papers as well. Oh, end papers. Yes. Tell me about end papers because that was on my list. Yeah, so printed end papers, for those that don't know, is when you open the hardback of a book, usually with POD printing, it'll be either white or cream printed on the inside of the case. 
So print in papers are effectively similar to an interior page where we would print in colour kind of the uh, another full spread image across it. So it creates a really nice high quality finish. And again, with Sasha Black's most recent Kickstarter, we printed some lips on the inside. So yeah, you'll be able to upload an additional file on both the front and back of the hardback book, which will be a completely printed end paper. And will the texture be different or is it the, it's just like normal paper? It is a slightly thicker paper. For those that it's 170 GSM, so it's it's kind of the same thickness as a jacket. Okay, cool. And I should say, Sasha's are not just lips; they're vampire lips. <laughs> yes, yes, sorry, <laughs> with fangs. <laughs> and people can find can have a look at that on her Kickstarter, which I'll link. It might I don't know if it'll finish. It might have finished by the time this goes I out. Think it finishes this week, yeah. So. But the pictures will still be on the Kickstarter. So I think this is really, really cool. So let's go through some of the other things that might be coming in this year that people might be interested in. Yeah, so the the biggest thing that I'm most excited about, and I guess it's something we haven't talked about too much, we've just signed the contract for a new machine, which will be doing sprayed edges. Woohoo! Um, so <laughs> that will be, so far, I think the recent kind of delivery date we've been given is July. So that'll land in the facility in July, and we've already done the code for it. So as soon as it's kind of there, we'll be able to drop it straight onto the site. So you can, on a single copy basis, do sprayed edges books as well. I think that's, yeah, I'm really excited on a, about that On a one. single copy, so that'll be print on demand? Yes, all print on demand, yes. Wow. Okay, so if people don't know, what are sprayed edges? So um, on both a paperback and a hardback, if you've got a book block, you have normally kind of just see the white or the cream of the paper on the edge of the book itself. So you'll be able to print a fully digital image on that. So we've seen some really cool ones where the front cover wraps all the way around to the back. And again, so it's like a complete 360 degree picture or people have done really nice patterns and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's really exciting. Okay, yeah. So just to be clear, if people are holding a book in their hand with the spine against their palm, the kind of the edges of the pages, if they hold it towards them, will normally look white or cream, as you say. But this will be, you can actually have a pattern on there or, like you say, a cover. So it means you can just put a lot more art on your book, right? Yeah, and I think it's one of those, you look at Kickstarters and someone's selling their kind of traditional book for £10, £15 or with sprayed edges, £60, £70. So it just makes so much more of a premium product. And it's one of those that probably you won't traditionally do it for every book you sell, but Mm. you'll kind of sell to those super fans this special edition and really kind of a higher markup, which it's just great at the end of it. Well, that is cool because my next Kickstarter, Spear of Destiny, will happen in June so that might be a possible right yeah yeah no I, I would imagine so yeah so that'll be yeah really exciting that will be and I what I like I think about doing the as you say it could be print on demand but I actually really like doing the special editions for the kickstarters that I'm like Sasha's doing too and yeah. obviously signing them and all that kind of thing so it is interesting to consider what we can do as print on demand and then what we keep it as special i guess are there any things that you do that would have to be a special run no so i I guess our business model has always been print on demand because at the end of the day you would also want to see a proof so we just like to set ourselves up as anything we can do is print on demand i mean certainly with these bespoke things it won't be as you expect with amazon and ingram where they come in oh i guess more amazon where they come in a couple of days it will take slightly longer but i think that's something you can kind of really if you're selling direct or or if it's a proof you can do it all with your messaging and say it's bespoke and it's being handmade etc so yeah that's kind of the route we're taking yes we'll come back to what's different about selling direct but just a few more things so when we last summer you made a box for a trilogy of mine so it is actually a box for a boxed set what's the update on that yep they're kind of all lined up with this launch with ribbons advanced foiling and all those side of things so it's going to be a very exciting release as i say it's something we're i think is going to completely change the way of our business as well as kind of the way that authors have the ability to do stuff because very little options out there especially on a single copy basis to do these special editions okay and so for people on that it's they would obviously have to the book the box would be different for every single person's books it's not a standard size right so it would get built to order yeah so already on book vault you can create a bundle so effectively you select a series of books that you want to be shipped together and then that gives you a single isbn or SKU. 
and then you can download a template for that to be able to generate a book box. So we're also working with Readsy and we're just working with some of their designers as well. So we have some designers on hand that we can point in the direction of to create that artwork box as well. Because it's a bit different, I guess, to the traditional thing that you'd expect with a, a book. Yes. And this this is really interesting because uh, I do agree. I think the design has to be more than just what was on the cover, for example. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it, there's a lot more potential design work involved, which in itself is very exciting. And I guess for people listening, the reason we're doing this is one, because we all love books and we really like beautiful objects. But also we need to set ourselves apart in a world where there are millions of digital books and I think this is a way to set ourselves apart and also we can make more money per copy we're not going to go into the finances of this and obviously these more special editions cost more money to print but you can still make a good profit as I know so just a a few more things so my next project after Spear of Destiny is going to be a high quality photo coffee table book so if people want to do photo books art books what are the options for that? Yeah, so we offer two different print options at BookVault. So we've got standard and premium. So our standard print is all done via an inkjet. So effectively, it's a massive taper on the end of a printer that kind of goes straight through and is chopped straight into a book. And that works fantastically for, I'd say, 99% of all books. But we do also offer premium printing as well. So that comes out of a toner device. So it's kind of your traditional printer of feeding in sheets and trimming them down from that. So that's perfect, as you mentioned, for the coffee table books and those side of things. So it's it's really nice, vibrant colour on a glossy paper you would traditionally see with photo books or coffee table books. The one thing I would mention, and it's always good to be open with this caveat, is we are still a digital printer. So you mm. won't get those hand tone colour matches that you might do with other arts printers or, or LIFO printers or, or things like that. We try to get the best colour match for your file, but equally there there may be a slight deviation. Yes, okay, no, that's great. I've written down here Kickstarter help. Yes. <laughs> What, yeah. what about that? Because you and I have had emails going backwards and forwards with spreadsheets and you guys have been so helpful to me. But obviously, if more and more authors do this, you can't necessarily offer sort of individual help like you've given me. Yeah. So as Kickstarters are growing more and more, myself personally, yeah, head banging against the wall with different data kind of formats and stuff like that. So we've built in a bulk upload tool. So again, this will be launching with all these ribbons and it's going to be a big launch of kind of all the bespoke options and Kickstarter help. So effectively, you'll be able to upload your spreadsheet, whether that's your kind of backer spreadsheet of Kickstarter or a template, one that you've created yourself, match up the data fields to Book Vault, and then it will automatically import all those orders for you. So the plan is it's very hands-off. So certainly it's going to make our life easier, but also it'll mean you can upload a bulk order in a matter of, I say minutes, it's still good to check all the data and make sure it's come across as you'd expect, because there is mm. always, we've seen, I don't know why, just someone sent over a spreadsheet the other week that had obscure spaces in. So it just made it, every space got replaced with a question mark or something like that. So it's always good just to validate it. And if you have any issues, reach out to us. But with 99% of people, it should just be a case of uploading a file and importing all the orders. Oh, I'm excited about that. So wait, that will be done by my thing? Uh, Yes, it will be, yes. Oh, thank goodness for that. (laughs) And I think this is what's exciting. And one, thank you personally, because uh, I very much value having someone who's so enthusiastic about technology. And also you have this great can-do attitude. I guess you mentioned Andy has that too. And the team generally does, which is, we're going to make this happen. We're so often with tech companies, having also worked for some myself, it's no, you can't do that. You have to do what our system tells you to do. We're not going to build anything. Whereas you'll just be like, no, we can do that and build something, which I love. (laughs) I think that's the, obviously myself attending some of the author events as well. I, well, I think the first one for me was 20 Books Vegas, where I was kind of taken a bit back. It was just me on a little table and I, I basically got, I lost all my material within the first hour. So it was kind of really fantastic speaking to authors and hearing what they want to do. And I think our passion as a company is just to enable people to earn more. I think we're looking at it, seeing the traditional players kind of, you've got to adhere to exactly what they want to do or or you don't do it at all. So yeah, it's certainly something we're really pushing out for a business because we can and we want to. Yeah. I mean, we're indie authors and you're an indie indie printer. So I mean, 
Yeah, that's that's the idea, which I love. And I also want people listening to keep this in mind. Um, I feel like, and I'm sure you guys do, people have a certain way of addressing KDP help or Ingram Spark help or some of the help yep. desks for some of the big companies. And they might assume that you have warehouses and warehouses of staff, but yes. you don't, do you? It's a small company. Yeah, so I mean, we are growing. So that's one big thing for us, customer service. As I say, we just took on two new people and it's kind of an ever-growing thing. But yeah, we are a relatively small company. We still have, we've got room for growth and things like that. But yeah, we there is always someone at the end of the phone or at the end of the email that, that is a nice person. So uh, they'll help you. Yes, yeah, so, so be nice. But what I, I do like that you now have a ticket system. And this is something of what was on my list for you, yes. like last year or whatever. It was like, you need a ticket system. So now if you are, once you're a Book Vault customer, you can access this form and you can raise a ticket. And I mean, obviously, there are always, not always, not every single time. But I mean, I, I sell quite a lot of books. And there might be a, a, a customer might email me and say, oh, this ship, shipment didn't arrive or something. And I just go in and I raise a ticket. And one of the team will look at it. So I think it's really good that you have that way of doing stuff that's important as well it makes me feel happy that you're dealing with it and the team do that really quickly yeah and I think that's something support is something we've uh, say as, as our growth noticed the demand in so as you say we introduced a ticket system we've also been kind of expanding our help center as well so there's quite a lot of it'll generally be if there's something not on the help center as they're replying to an email they'll also add it on there as well so that's ever growing as well as we're working with a creator as well to create some uh, YouTube videos as well on, on the whole process of BookVault to kind of step through how to do each thing as well so that's something that is ever growing for us as well. Oh, that's good. Okay, a couple more things. One is I am very lucky in that I can drive like three hours and can be at your factory. And that's how we've done the signing for yep. the book. Sasha lives in Peterborough. So she pops around to the to there too. But if people want signing options, I mean, there is something called tip-ins. Is, is that a possibility? Or, or is it that people have to ship books to themselves and then ship them on? Yeah, certainly that's something we're exploring. So we are, I guess, starting with the basic stuff, with the kind of bespoke stuff with ribbons and and things like that. But signing is something we're addressing. And I think the biggest concern for us is we obviously print in the UK and the US, but the US is not our facility. So we can't just demand them to do certain things. So stuff like sign books would have to be done in the UK. So we're just kind of looking at the, the custom side of things of shipping paper over there for them to sign and then shipping it back and that so it's we don't have an estimate on it yet but it is certainly something we're looking at because again a signed book is something you can add a lot more value to as well yeah exactly and I mean I love the fact that you know I've been an indie author for like 15 years now and every year we have had more options for what we can do and every year we get closer to being able to do exactly what traditional published authors (laughs) can do Um, I mean I remember back in the day we weren't even allowed to do pre-orders on Kindle or I was as a non-American author I couldn't even publish on Kindle back in like 2008 whenever it was and so it's so brilliant to hear some of the things you're bringing in because you know we see pictures of Neil Gaiman who obviously is super famous but he will sign front sheets he doesn't sign books he'll sign front sheets and then they'll get sent to the printer and then they'll get put in and let's face it there's some more indie authors with really big audiences who might be interested in doing that yeah definitely as as you say i think it's interesting because it's coming to the point now where actually the indies are in front of the traditional publishers i think that's that's kind of where it's heading that you know a lot more adaptable and and whereas traditional publishers just think that they can stay with their traditional ways and do what they do indie publishers are actually pushing forward and and doing more interesting and exciting things as well yeah absolutely or i guess uh, like we mentioned it's rare to see like at christmas i saw a couple of books with sprayed edges in waterstones i bought one for my niece but they're just not normal because they're more expensive and most books don't get that treatment so yeah i'm excited about that you mentioned the u.s printer so talk about that because obviously your peterborough plants in the uk so tell people if they're in the u.s or want to sell to the u.s how that works yeah, so we have a partner facility based out of Ohio and Ashland through Baker and Taylor. So they've been in the printing game a long time as well. And our US expansion started last July, where we've started sending books over there and, and it's kind of continually going. To be completely honest, we've been taken back by the demand. So there's been cases where things have maybe been a bit slower than we would like. But the great thing is, is we've always been able to back that up with our UK facility as well. So whereas if something would 
kind of is out of capacity in the US. We've been able to ship it from the UK in kind of the same time scales for our consolidated service. So that's a, that's a positive. So they offer kind of the base specs things. So they do the split color. They also do printed paperbacks and printed hardbacks in your kind of trade paper. So your cream and your white kind of textbook paper as such. So yeah, that's all printed out of the US. The time scales are generally three to five days for a book. So again, it's, it's nice and quick. Yes, and just to circle back to bundles, because we glossed over that, but it really is brilliant in that when you go to create a book, you can create a book and and then you can create a bundle and link them together. So when on my Shopify store, people can order, say, the first three of my arcane thrillers in print and it goes through as one order as a bundle and they get a special deal and I can, it just makes it much more easier to price at the front end, but also then the order goes through and then it's three books and I have those going out almost every day in in the US, which is pretty exciting. So yeah, I do think that the bundle technology, which again is uh, on, uh, people can do it themselves. Like they don't have to ask anyone, right? They just go in and set up another bundle. Yeah. And that's something we generally do. We kind of start stuff off as a a closed thing. So similar to what we've done with the bespoke options, we do it ourselves manually for a bit, just to try and iron out any kinks or work out what goes wrong. We did that with bundles. And I know that that got very tedious. So yeah, we now have the option for someone just to log on to the BookVault portal um, and set up bundles themselves and get it all, all going. So it's really, really good. It is. And just for people, if you are selling direct, bundling print books is fantastic. It makes the, the deal look better, but you can also make good money. Whereas if people are like, oh, you can just do that on Amazon. Well, <laughs> Amazon's print prices, we make very little money from print on Amazon. And this is, again, why we're also excited is that we can actually make decent money on print and print bundles. So I have bundles of three and I have a, a 12 book bundle, which also sells. So yeah, that's exciting. So I also wanted to ask about merchandise since you have a sister company that offers mugs and stuff like that and many authors who have Shopify stores want to add this kind of thing so what's happening with merchandise yeah so we have as I say part of the print on demand worldwide umbrella we also have a company called Photobubble so that's UK based and that kind of focuses on the equivalent of snapfish so we do photo books and as you say mugs tote bags etc so that is something we're planning to merge into the book vault system as well so that you can bundle things like a, a coffee mug with a, a book and do those kind of upsell bundles as well. And for Kickstarters, you know, kitting stuff so you can do those reward tiers with different things. So again, they will be all print on demand and single copy. Or I need to get out of the habit of single copy for mugs, but single <laughs> mugs. So they'll all be done through the book vault portal. And we're probably looking towards the kind of middle of the year for that. Okay, and I mean, most authors are looking at, say, bookmarks and posters, cards, that kind of thing. Yes, yeah, again, that will kind of all be through that side of things as well. So you'll be able to upload a leaflet that goes with every order, or you'll be able to send yourself a boatload of leaflets or, yeah, bookmarks, etc. So, yeah, that's all exciting. I think that's, again, something that with Selling Direct, people use apps like Printful, which is great but then you've got to charge a customer twice for shipping because you've got the book coming from ourselves and then the the mug coming from Printful so combining those together will be I, I hope a game changer. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I did enable some of this originally. And also, I was concerned about the quality. Not that the quality was bad. It's just you really do have to check everything and test everything. And I was like, look, I would much rather be able to know that my books are going out with the mug or or whatever from you guys. So I turned off my other stuff. And I am waiting. (laughs) for the merch <laughs> I, think I need to stop going to all these conferences and uh, you're tanning myself do some on the work beach. Alex so come yeah, on <laughs> you're so lazy <laughs> I know <laughs> And and that by, by the way, everyone listening, this is a joke. I I, I have had many emails from Alex at like one a.m., two a.m. I mean, you work so hard weekends. You barely ever have a day off. It's a good job that you're in your twenties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but no, I appreciate all your hard work. I know how Thank hard you. you work, and I really do appreciate it. Okay, so let's talk talk about something else, which is. When authors do print on demand, usually with Amazon and with Ingram. It's either free or there's a small charge to upload. But then they get paid by that company. So if people use KDP Print, Amazon will pay them 
for the books. Now, what is the difference when people are using Book Vault or any other service when they're selling direct? Yeah, so direct selling is fantastic because you're in control of your own business. So effectively, you are the payment gateway. All we would do is take the print. So effectively, if you had your own direct store, the customer would pay you for the print and shipping of the book. And then you would then just pay us for the print. So you would kind of get everything there. So it's a really higher profitable way of of selling things. Effectively, we offer a range of apps for direct sales stores on Shopify, Wix, WooCommerce, Zapier, and and there's a few other ones. I think TikTok Shop is in the works as well, which we're really excited for. PayHip as well, I think. PayHip, yes. Yeah, so PayHip as well. So it's a a really good way of, of kind of doing that as an automated way of the journey. And I think it's... It's for me, I feel like the way forward is one of those things that you can't jump into it too quickly. But equally, once you do jump into it and do it a bit by bit, it works really well. Yes, I would totally agree with you. But you and I, I mean, you are very technical. I am reasonably okay with some technical stuff. How technical do people have to be in order to implement Book Vault onto their WooCommerce or their Wix or their Shopify? I think it all depends on the platform you use. So Shopify, we always tend to direct people to. It's a really nice, simple platform. Yep, you can do more advanced things on it, but if you take the kind of baseline, it's really simple. In terms of link, kind of WooCommerce is kind of a bit more technically minded. There might be plugin conflicts and things like that. So it's always worth noting with that. But in terms of the Book Vault app itself, we try and make things as easy as possible. So you effectively go to the systems app store and install the Book Vault plugin. What that then does is you link up your account and then you can also link up your titles. So Book Vault will know that when that title is ordered on your store, it needs to fulfill this product. And that works for both individual titles, but as you mentioned before, also bundles as well. In terms of shipping as well, we've seen with other apps on the market, people kind of have to go in and and do each shipping rate manually one by one and kind of work it out. Our app sits in the middle and it will pull the most up-to-date pricing and serve it to the customer. So the customer pays exactly what you would get charged and that gets updated 24-7. And I think it uploads on Shopify just shy of 40,000 shipping rates. So if you were to have to do that manually yourself, you'd be there a very long time. Mm. Um, And then when the order comes through, it automatically picks up that order, sends it straight to BookVault um, and print and fulfills it directly to the customer from either the UK or US facility for you. So the only thing you really need to do is if you're not happy to link a payment card, go in and pay for that order, or you can add a balance or link a payment card and it'll automatically go through and process that for you. Yes. So just to reiterate, with this way of doing things, like you mentioned, so if someone orders a book on my Shopify store, they will pay. And if it's PayPal, I'll get the money like immediately. If it's Shopify pay, I'll get it within like 48 hours. And if the order goes through to Book Vault and I have a balance there and it comes off my balance, so it, yeah. or I could pay for it individually as it goes through, I've got a credit card on it. So this is the difference is you get you have to pay quicker, but you also get the money quicker. So in terms of cash flow, you do have to be aware of that. Most orders, it won't be a problem because you're not going to get like 30,000 orders in one day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more kind of spread out. But I did want to make it clear to people because I, I feel like some people are surprised that you're not paying them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I think that's it's a different way of doing it. But again, it's one of those that if you do have any questions, you can reach out to the team and they can talk you through the process. They've done mm. it countless times. So, yeah, it's really good. But equally, as a company as well, we do also offer the the kind of distribution model as such. We call it more of a stepping stone to direct sales. So we have our own retailer called the Great British Bookshop. And as I say, that probably sits more as a, it is our store, but it also is kind of a direct sales stepping stone. So we will actually only charge 10% royalties, uh, sorry, yeah, 10% royalties minus the print cost. So you retain 90% minus the print cost um, there. So that's another way of earning kind of a higher margin than the likes of Amazon. And also we pay out the royalties on the 14th of every month as well so if you were to make a sale in march we would then pay it out on the 14th of april or the kind of closest to working day 
Mm, which is quicker than yes. than Amazon and some of the others. Just on that, it, it, people tend to, including myself, we use Ingram Spark to go to their network of over 40,000 retailers. So I use KDP Print just for Amazon. Then I use Ingram Spark for this wider. And then I use you guys for Direct and Kickstarter. But you, as you mentioned, you do have kind of distribution too. Is there an overlap if people use Ingram and Book Vault? No, so it's it's something that generally with distribution models, it, it always is generally who will win the buy box. So it can work with both ways. It's always best to have a primary distributor. So that would kind of be whoever you wish to choose. But then you can also list with other distributors there. Something exciting that we're working on. It's in a, a very closed beta at the moment, but it is something we're hoping to launch in the next couple of months, I would say. Um, is more of an enhanced distribution model. So currently we distribute to kind of Amazon retailers and a couple of others in the UK. We're working with Baker and Taylor to cover the kind of US distribution. We're also working with an Indian distributor to cover the Indian market, as well as the Brazilian market and also the South African market as well. So that will start to grow our kind of distribution platform because we've always been generally UK focused, but now Mm. we're thinking worldwide and kind of pushing out to those worldwide channels. (laughs) <laughs> I love it. I love that um, indie authors are, are sort of growing your business so much faster than the traditional publishers. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, as I say, with traditional, it's always been, this is our job and we need to do it. Whereas now we've got the avenues to, as I say, go worldwide. Yeah, and there's a lot of energy. I think that's the other thing. There's a lot of good energy amongst um, indie authors are so pleased, aren't they? To be like, yes. oh, you mean I can do foil? That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that, I think that's the thing and that's why I like going to them so much the events when you're talking to people not only are they giving us ideas as well they're kind of helping us steer in the right direction but we're able to show what can be done I think when you say on a podcast mention about falling it's really hard to pitch that whereas if you see us in person you can really see see those beautiful books so we we did a talk at the writing superstars and we had the books all up on show and I think they had to usher people out of the room in the end because they, they needed it for the next talk <laughs> that's awesome also, you mentioned Reedsy earlier around designers maybe doing boxed sets and things like that and having a sort of referral process. If people, because I think there's a huge gap in the author services market for people actually helping to build direct sales stores. Is that something that you've mentioned to them or something that, you know, because people must ask that all the time? Yeah, I think it's a difficult one because there is the need to... Um, say if you've not got time to kind of work with someone but equally I think with direct sales it's so important to know your store and to be able to have a steer on it so I think there is we work with a company called Digital Authors Toolkit Stuart there he he kind of focuses on Wix and does author websites there so if we do have people we push them in that direction and he's fantastic he's UK based and he's great but it is something I think there is a gap for and it needs to be grown on. Mm, Yes. Well, I think there's a lot of exciting times ahead. And obviously, you and the team go to many of the author conferences. So people can certainly see you there or reach out to the team. So where can people find Book Vault online? Yeah, so online, we've got our website, which is bookvault.app. Um, and that it provides kind of you can sign up to the Book Vault portal as well as get a quote before creating an account. We also have our social platforms as well. So we're on the the kind of usual ones, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or X, I guess now, where we kind of run promotions as well as publish articles and and things like that. We're trying to grow the YouTube channel a little bit as well. So that will provide kind of helpful videos, as I say, that we're working on how to do little things. But then also primarily we're attending a lot of events as well. So we're at 20 Books Seville in a couple of weeks' time, then London Book Fair, We've got a uh, indie author conference in Huntingdon as well, um, Inkerscon, Nink, and then Author Nation as well, which we're excited for at the end of the year. Oh, fantastic. Well, I'll see you in Seville. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, great. Well, thanks so much for your time, Alex. That was great. Thank you very much. So I hope you found this episode interesting and useful if selling direct is something you might be interested in either now or later on. And making more money with print is just such a brilliant thing as authors. Now, remember, you are not too late. These are the early days of selling direct and there is no rush. So wherever you are in your author journey, definitely think about that. So let me know what you think of today's show. You can leave a comment on the show notes at thecreativepen.com or on the YouTube channel or email me joanna at thecreativepen.com. Next week, I'm talking about dealing with uncertainty, grief 
and change with Becca Syme. And we talk about some of the big shifts going on for indie authors right now. The splintering of old business models and also the impact of, yes, you guessed it, generative AI, as well as how to cope with fear, uncertainty, grief and all kinds of other emotions in these challenging times. So that's coming up next week. And in the meantime, happy writing and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening today. I hope you found it helpful. You might also like the backlist episodes and show notes available at thecreativepen.com forward slash podcast. You can also get your free author blueprint at thecreativepen.com forward slash blueprint. If you'd like to connect, you can tweet me at The Creative Pen or find me on Facebook at The Creative Pen. See you next time.